So Nathan, you and I wanted to talk about the hierarchy of values. This is something that we all have, have learned at some point or another in, in a rehab program or in recovery groups or otherwise they, they exist in normal, normal context as well, so to speak. And we wanted to talk about how to approach them honestly and what the impact of, of approaching them honestly has on how we, how we enact our values, how we, how we exhibit them. Yeah. And how much time we spend on them uh, as they're prioritized. So this is something that I didn't take very seriously for most of my life. And over the past, uh, maybe five or 10 years, I guess, maybe five over the last five, for sure. I've made more of an effort to, to really take the time. I usually once a month I'll do this. I'll sit down and I'll, I'll, try to figure out what is most important to me in my life as in, you know, is it, um, is it, you know, how is it a family? Is it your spouse? Is it your, your kids, your job, money, your pets, your, you know, whatever has uh, some sort of value to you, um, some uh, personal value. It's, it's important to check on them. I believe because, um, they change. Uh, you think that, uh, well, I know exactly what's important to me and that's how it is. And, and, uh, it's surprising, but your priorities and values shift as you, as you change as a person. Absolutely. You know, so one of the most impactful moments for me of, of the last year and a, a bit was the first time I ever completed a hierarchy of values. And it was, Revealing for a couple of reasons. The first one was that uh, looking back at myself, and I was you know pretty fresh into into recovery when I when I did that, and looking at what I put at the top and what didn't make the list. So I was putting um, my my child and my family at the at the very top, and putting my um, my home and my career up at the top or in the within the top say third. My mental health didn't make the list. My, um, physical health didn't make the list. Uh, my sobriety and, and recovery didn't make the list. And that's not to say that, that it wasn't important to me, but I wasn't realizing the impact of, uh, uh, you know, I think that there's a, a conception. I had the conception that if I did anything other than putting my son and my loved ones right up at the top, that I was being selfish and I was failing at that moment to recognize that, that by putting myself at the top, there's a, like the trickle down effect of on those relationships um, is, is paramount is huge. And, and that we have to put that for me, at least putting my mental health first and then realizing are all these other things going to be affected by that? Well, yeah, they sure are. And yeah. uh, Yeah. I think uh, just for the listeners out there, and maybe they're not familiar with what we're we're speaking about here. If you if you sit down and uh, just kind of do a brainstorming session and just make a big list of everything that you you care about in in your life and uh, things you things that are important to you, compile a big list and then uh, pick five or 10 of those items that are what you believe to be the most important to you, matter most to you. And then after you do that, try to put them in order. So whatever's the most important at the top and then working your way down. And this is what we mean by a, a hierarchy of values. And what you're saying there, Corey, is uh, is pretty common where you see people, the first time they they do this exercise, they'll often put their their family, spouse or kids at the top, they'll completely negate a, a lot of important kind of self maintenance items like mental health uh, or neglect, not negate. Sorry. Um, or, and a, another fascinating thing that happens is uh, if you do this with a person who's who's actively addicted to their drug of choice, 
they will go through the motions of compiling the entire list without putting their drug of choice on anywhere on the list. When yeah. if you if you ask somebody to be honest and, and serious about it, most often that drug of choice is going to be number one or two. Absolutely. When I think about what was guiding so many, the vast majority of my actions, it, it was the drug of choice. Mm -hmm. And I, I would have answered, you know, my son, my job, my home, my family first at that time too. But when I think, well, how am I putting my, my child and my family and my home first when I'm, when I'm, when the first thing I'm thinking about is, is the drug. Mm -hmm. You, you can't really do that when you can't, if you're, if you're using a, uh, an opiate like that, it's, I mean, it, it's really got you in a bind. I mean, it might be different with other substances that, that aren't so disastrous to, to quit, but with that one, I mean, you're locked in. It yeah. has to be the, the most important thing or you're, you're of no use to anybody. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I think the importance of this to me is, is what it does is it gives you, it gives you an insight into, you know, kind of how you're developing as a person, but it also prevents a lot of cognitive dissonance. And what I mean by that is often I'll find that I've, I've made a list and I've got a, a kind of a running tally of things that I'm, I'm supposed to be paying attention to or, or goals that I'm working towards. And at the end of the month, when I look and I see, I'll ask myself, okay, you've got, you've got this item, say it's uh, writing or something. This is, this is of this much importance to you. And yet I see that you've spent only this much time here and you've spent all this extra time and focus on item number eight. So yeah. why is that? And if you'll notice, there'll be a feeling associated with that in the background that you can identify, which is just a little bit of cognitive dissonance because you are acting in a way that does not line up with your, your real beliefs. Yeah. Well, so Nathan, can, can you tell us more what that feeling is? Like, how do you recognize it as dissonance, as cognitive dissonance? It's a type of, uh, it's irritating. It's like a, a type of angst. It's, it's, it's like you're, you're moving towards your goals, but you're not getting any, any reward. And I believe that's because your energy expenditure is, is off kilter. It's not, yeah. it's not focused where it should be focused. So you would think that accomplishing whatever you're trying to accomplish in, in whatever aspect that's lower on your list would bring you more joy because you spend all this time on it, but you find that it brings you very little, uh, you, you don't get any uh, satisfaction or very little satisfaction. And it makes sense if you go back and look at how important that item is to you. I mean, of that's course right. it's, a, it's not a, you didn't list it as high on the list of things that you wanted, you wanted to take care of or, or be responsible about. So of course it's, you're going to get less reward for it if you're being honest about what those things are and that, that it should be said that those that's hard to do. It's, it is hard. It, it is because, because to, once you make that list and, and, and identify what your actual priorities and meaningful aspects of your life are then to then it, turn around and ignore them um, mm -hmm. is there's a, there is a consequence to that. And again, I, I think back to, for myself, the consequence was that it kept me, it kept me in this really unhealthy mental state. Um, and, and I kind of wasn't able to, to break out of it and I wasn't seeing I wasn't sort of clearly seeing what the consequences were. Um, it is hard to see when it's, when it's bad because you don't want to look at it. You're, you can feel, it feels like you're living a lie. If you're, if you've got enough of this going on, I mean, if you're, if you're running around telling people that you're, you're one thing and then obviously doing another, this is, uh, what kind of a person is this? I mean, you look at yourself mm -hmm. and how can you, how can you view yourself as somebody that uh, you can respect 
Uh, what kind of integrity could you possibly have? What does your word mean? It means next to nothing. If you're not, if what's coming out of your mouth is not being followed or is an accurate representation of your actions, then yeah, it's, I mean, how do you, how do you be at ease with yourself? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I was telling myself that all of these positive things in my life were at the top and, um, but I was, in fact, the, the opiate addiction was way up at the top. I was working overtime. I was totally burnt out from my, from my job. Uh, I felt so much cognitive dissonance from my job. I was ignoring my physical health, um, certainly ignoring my mental health mm. and all of the other things were suffering. The, the, my relationship with my family was, was suffering. I was putting, you know, the, the home that I, my own home that I value, uh, I was putting at risk if I lost my job and if I wasn't able to, to pay the bills or if my health was out the window, then how did my, how did my home actually matter to me? How did my relationship with my son actually matter to me? Uh, so by that too, it has made me um, realize that being off work and having to take the time that I had to take for recovery, as much as that was such a tough pill to swallow for me, and as I, I know a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people who are in the same position as me, um, it is actually that time has allowed me to, to put those changes to my value pyramid into place and to actually, okay, no, I've got the time now. I've got a blank slate. I can put my mental health first. I can put my relationships way up there and take the time for them and nurture them and, and feed them. And, and that job that was stressing me out and burning me out and killing me is sitting much more appropriately lower than where I thought it was. Yeah. And I, this is probably one of the most common sources of, uh, of misalignment for people, uh, between where they place their career and their job versus where they place their spouse, family, and kids. Yeah. I, I see it all the time where somebody's they're they're talking about how unbelievably they're having a really hard time with uh, such and such a, uh, a vice, like maybe they they find that they're drinking too much and they're sure that it's because of the stress that they're under at work and, and their relationship is failing. And they're, they also don't like the fact that they're not spending any time with their kids, but they, they've got it reconciled in their mind that somehow by putting in all these extra hours, they, they are doing what they're supposed to be doing and they, they, yeah. they can't see that uh, the, the truth of the matter is that, I mean, if you, if you continue down the path that these, the person I'm thinking about, if they continue down that path, it's, it's not going to matter that they made X amount of dollars this year because they're going to, uh, they're either going to be burnt out, divorced, um, their kids going to, you know, come, <laughs> they're going to grow up hating them or, or have a, a, a severe resentment issue. And when you sit down and think about uh, the value of money, like, uh, yeah, money's valuable. Money is, uh, it's a big deal. It, uh, it, we have to pay attention to it and we have to take a, a realistic kind of, uh, you have to look at it with real uh, placement as far as value is concerned. But I don't think you would, you would exchange your kid for an extra, you know, 20 or $30,000 a year. And right. that's what a lot of people are doing. That's right. So, so it's, uh, again, it's about just taking the time to assess the problem and, uh, it's, no, it's not a problem. Assess what's valuable to you and, uh, go ahead, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, Nathan. I, what I was going to say to, to the value is, am I deriving identity from, from these things too? Like is, is money where I'm getting my identity from is money or is my, my career and my profession, how I am identifying myself. Um, or, or is it being uh, well-rounded and, and, and balanced? 
Yeah, that's another kind of complexity to it is the amount of value people place in that identity. And I think this is something that we're getting better at as uh, the, as we go through with the, uh, the next generation of uh, healthcare workers. If you look back to how it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the status attached with uh, being a doctor or or uh, being somebody who's, you know, out there saving lives and stuff was a, it was a something that was marketed to get people into the position and and cherished, and it led to uh, something that is still very much in existence, and that's a kind of like a medical hierarchy, which is just, in my opinion, it's just such nonsense. <laughs> uh, oh, so I mean, I'm glad that we we've brought this up. The thing that I think of so often is, is the criticism I hear that I heard from particularly from nurses about young nurses or from older doctors about younger doctors is that, well, they don't, they don't care as much. They're more interested in, in their time off and in their, all of these other things in their life. And this is just a, a job to them. And I kind of, I kind of think, well, bless those people. Like they, th- maybe they just have a balanced life yeah. And maybe they're successfully able to put their their physical health, their recreation, their time with their family, their creativity, whatever that may be. Maybe they're just doing a, a better job of, of prioritizing those values. And maybe yeah. they're getting honest about where their their career and their job is sitting on their value index. And that it's not a that in itself is not a, at all. Uh, a harmful thing. Are they good at their job? When they come, do they perform to their to, to the best of their abilities? That's a different thing. Mm-hmm. But but by saying that your job is not at the very top, we as a as a society and as a profession have to ditch the criticism of people who who strive for more balance. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I I know the type of uh, individuals you're you're talking about in a general sense. Yep. And they're always unhappy. They're like a tremendously unhappy type of person. And to, I mean, from an outsider looking in, it's like, well, yeah, I could see why things worked out this way for you. You know, you, you, you put all your eggs in one basket and there's very little going on otherwise, you know? And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, these days where, there's so much uncertainty and who knows when they're going to be replaced by an algorithm or a, a, a some kind of robot or AI. I mean, to do, it's, it's fine to be passionate about your work and to uh, do your best in your career, but putting it above everything else. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, and, uh, you know, you don't have a family and you've designed your life so that that's the way it's going to be. I have no issues with that, but, you know, running around telling other people that they, they should be placing their career first, regardless of what else they have going on in their life. Nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. I, and maybe there's some envy there, <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe there's a bit of jealousy and envy at, at the fact that, that other people have, have achieved that. I don't know. Certainly there is. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we could leave it there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think it's something to consider. I wish I had considered it long ago and Mm -hmm. got really, really honest about it long ago. So I hope that, uh, that maybe this gives people the opportunity to check in with that with within themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That is the hope. Um, so yeah, I guess we leave it there, right? Eh? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And for those of you who enjoy our uh, periodic moments of silence, that one was for you. <laughs> <laughs>